you've probably heard of variable frequency drives. Maybe you know that they're important in many industries, but perhaps you're a little confused about them. Not a problem. That's what this video is all about. In just a few minutes, we'll get you up to speed about this fascinating and useful technology. Let's get started by tackling the big question right away. What is a variable frequency drive? I'll start with the short answer. A variable frequency drive is an electronic motor controller that manages the motor's speed, torque, or position. Variable frequency drives come in all shapes and sizes. Some live in an electronics cabinet protected from the hostile environment outside. Others sit on top of the motor they control and can handle direct exposure to the operating environment without trouble. Some can control more than one motor. Regardless of the type, brand, or application, all variable frequency drives work in much the same way. Before I go any further, I should probably clear something up. The terms variable frequency drive, VFD, and inverter all mean the same thing. To save time, I'll use VFD from now on. To understand how VFDs work, you need to understand motors. So, let's talk about how motors work. We'll start with the most popular industrial motor type, the AC asynchronous motor, also known as the AC induction motor. These motors are very simple. In fact, they have just two important components, the stator and the rotor. The rotor spins inside the stator and turns the motor shaft. The rotor is a little more complex than it looks from the outside. It's actually a cage of metal bars. Electrically, it's a coil connected together at both ends. Some people call this rotor style a squirrel cage since it resembles the toy that keeps your pet rodent happy. That's also the reason this motor type sometimes goes by the name squirrel cage motor. Electromagnetism is what makes motors spin. The stator contains three electromagnets made from three coils of wire wound around a steel core. Magnetic poles always come in pairs, so those three coils give us six magnetic poles, which we'll call A1 and A2, B1 and B2, and C1 and C2. Alternating current energizes those coils. It comes from a three-phase power supply, which is nothing more than three power supplies working together. Each puts out an electric current that rises and falls in a sine wave pattern. Notice that each sine wave starts at a different place in its cycle. This is intentional because the power supply can deliver more energy when it works this way. Motors with six magnetic poles are actually called two-pole motors rather than six-pole. That's because there are two poles per power supply phase. When those three power supplies energize the motor's three coils, three separate magnetic fields form inside the stator. They mix and match, add and subtract, forming a single combined field that points in a specific direction. If you put a compass inside the stator, its needle will align with that magnetic field and show where it's pointing. Now here comes the magic. As the power supplies cycle through their sine waves, the combined magnetic field constantly changes where it points, which makes the compass needle spin. We call this a rotating magnetic field. It's what makes the motor spin. But wait a minute. The compass has a magnetic needle, but the rotor doesn't contain any magnets. What makes it spin? That's another piece of magic. The stator's magnetic field passes through the rotor's squirrel cage and induces an electric current in it. The electric current blowing through the rotor cage creates a second magnetic field which surrounds the rotor, making it a magnet. That second magnetic field's polarity is opposite to the stator's magnetic field. As I'm sure you remember from science class, opposite poles attract, so the rotor and stator fields attract each other. 
as the stator field rotates, it drags the magnetized rotor around with it, producing mechanical motion. That's pretty clever. So how fast does it turn? Well, that depends on the power supply's frequency, how many times per second those sine waves go through their cycles. In some countries, like the United States, power supplies have a frequency of 60 hertz, 60 cycles per second. This makes the stator's magnetic field rotate 60 times per second or 3600 times per minute. In many other countries, especially those in Europe, power supplies have a lower frequency of 50 hertz, so the magnetic field goes around at a slower 3000 times per minute. The stator's magnetic field rotation speed is called the synchronous speed because it's synchronized with the power supply's frequency. A two-pole motor connected to 60 Hz power will have a synchronous speed of 3600 RPM. So, with 60 Hz power, the shaft will turn at 3600 RPM, right? Well, almost, but not quite. It actually turns about 5% slower. This behavior is called slip, and it's caused by the physics underlying this particular motor technology. Slip is also the reason we call these motors asynchronous motors, because they don't rotate in synchronization with the stator's rotating magnetic field. There's also another factor behind how fast the motor turns, the number of poles in the stator. A two-pole stator has a synchronous speed of 3600 RPM, if you build the stator with more poles, however, the magnetic field takes longer to go around, which makes the motor turn more slowly. Here's a four-pole stator. As you can see, it has four poles per phase, giving a total of 12. Its magnetic field takes twice as long to go around, giving it a synchronous speed of 1800 RPM. Four-pole motors are the most popular type of asynchronous motor, so you'll see them often. Time for a little math. There's a nifty little equation that lets us calculate the motor's speed. The synchronous speed in RPM is equal to 120 times the power supply's frequency in hertz divided by the number of poles in the stator. Here are a few examples. A two-pole motor with a 60 hertz power supply has a synchronous speed of 3600 RPM. A four-pole motor has a synchronous speed of 1800 RPM. Six poles, 1200 RPM. Eight poles, 900 RPM. The shaft speeds are about 5% slower because of slip. If we run the same motors on a 50 Hz power supply, they'll follow the same formula, but as you can see, they'll turn a bit more slowly. This is probably a good time to mention that there's another kind of motor. It's the AC Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motor, or Servo Motor. It's similar to the asynchronous motor, but has a different rotor design. Instead of a squirrel cage, the rotor is equipped with permanent magnets. With this design, the motor shaft turns at the synchronous speed with no slip. Servo motors have a number of advantages over asynchronous motors, so they're popular in some applications. And that's enough about motors. We've laid the important groundwork, so without further ado, let's get back to VFDs. By now, I think you can guess that variable frequency drives control motors by synthesizing three-phase power whose frequency varies smoothly from zero hertz up to a maximum value. VFDs also manage the voltage and current to optimize the motor's performance. So what's inside the VFD that makes all this magic possible? Quite a bit. Let's take a look. First, we connect the VFD up to the line, supplying it with three-phase power. Some VFDs can run on single-phase power, but most industrial units require three-phase. Next, we take the three-phase AC and run it through a device called a rectifier, which converts it from alternating current to direct current. 
The DC is very choppy, however, so the next stop is a bank of filter capacitors that smooth it out. Instead of a sine wave, it's now a slightly rippling flat line. Many VFDs have an external connector called the DC link or DC bus, where this voltage is available. Always be careful around this connector since the DC link's voltage can be 650 volts or more. This high voltage DC is what actually powers the motor. It goes from the filter section into three IGBTs, insulated gate bipolar transistors, which drive the motor. A microcontroller, a tiny computer, controls the IGBTs and tells them what to do. And that's it. While VFDs do some very complex things, they're actually rather simple inside. Now let's take a closer look at how the VFD controls the motor. The VFD synthesizes the output power waveform using a technique called pulse width modulation or PWM. The IGBTs inside the VFD are electronically controlled switches. All they can do is switch the high voltage DC on and off. But they do this very quickly, between 2000 and 16,000 times per second. Instead of sending a sine wave to the motor, the VFD sends it rapid on-off pulses of high voltage DC. By varying the ratio of on to off time, the pulse width, the VFD creates the effect of a variable voltage. Let's see this in action. For simplicity, we'll look at just one IGBT, but never forget that the VFD is actually outputting three synthesized waveforms, one from each IGBT. Notice that the on to off ratio is changing over time. If the on time is short and the off time is long, the motor senses the pulse as a low voltage. If the on and off times are equal, the motor senses the pulse as a medium voltage. And if the on time is long and the off time is short, it feels like a high voltage to the motor. The IGBTs can also reverse the polarity to create negative pulses. By combining pulse widths for low, medium, and high voltages in both positive and negative directions, the VFD creates what looks like a sine wave to the motor. Using this basic technique, the VFD can synthesize three-phase sine waves of any required voltage and frequency. And that's how the VFD controls the motor. Pretty simple. Software algorithms in the VFD control this process, managing the motor's voltage, current, speed, and torque. Inexpensive VFDs may have just one simple algorithm, but some, like this MobiDrive technology, have multiple PWM algorithms, so they can control many different motor types. Advanced motor control modes usually require a motor's speed sensor, such as an encoder or resolver. Some VFDs can use the feedback from this sensor to perform positioning operations. That's a topic for another video. For now, we'll take a quick look at motor control modes and how they differ. We use the MobiDrive technology as an example. VF mode, also called volts per hertz mode, is a simple speed control mode that works with almost any asynchronous motor. It doesn't require any kind of motor speed sensor, so it's great for budget-friendly applications. If you need better control and you're using an SEW Eurodrive motor, VFC mode, which stands for Voltage Flux Control, is a better choice. It uses a motor speed sensor if you have one, but doesn't require it if you don't. It gives much more precise control, especially at lower speeds. ELSM mode, which stands for Encoderless Synchronous Machine, can run SEW Eurodrive permanent magnet synchronous motors that don't have a motor speed sensor. It's the equivalent of VF mode for servo motors. And for the very best control, choose CFC mode, which stands for Current Flux Control. It works with asynchronous and permanent magnet synchronous motors. It offers superb control, but does require a motor speed sensor. 
The bottom line is that you should always check with the manufacturer to be sure that a particular VFD can control your motor in the way that the application requires. VFD manufacturers provide this information on their websites as well as through their sales representatives. For more information about SEW Eurodrive's large portfolio of VFDs, contact your local representative or visit our website at www.sewurodrive.com. And with that, I wish you success with VFDs and a very good day.